how do you forgive yourself? We've all had those times where we've done something that was just horrendous, terrible, and awful. And, uh, and we feel regret. We feel just lower than a snake's belly under a wagon wheel. I mean, if you, that, uh, it, you feel low, man, you feel real low. How do you forgive yourself for the, the screw up? How do you feel? Forgive yourself about any screw up? Well, we're going to be talking about that this week on episode 196 of the Relaxed Mail. Hey man, hello and welcome to the Relaxed Mail. I am your host, Brian, and I am a certified men's coach that assists men who are just just neck deep in the suffering of their life. Men who are going through a, a rough time like a divorce or being fired from a job, sometimes something that has happened where they're just so much overwhelmed, so much confusion, they've got mental spin just going crazy. I step in, I help men sort it out help and help get them on their way. So help guys with that day-to-day struggle and life can come at us fast. And sometimes we become so overwhelmed that we just don't know what to do next. And I just help these men. I get to the root of their suffering and help them step back, relax so that they can actually enjoy life. And each and every episode, we take a look and see what it takes to change how you look at your life how you have to look at who you are and the thoughts that you have surrounding all of that so that you can actually step through that pain and enjoy life on the other end. Stop being the victim, start becoming a a victor. So guys, thank you again for, uh, for jumping in, watching the show. Uh, I'm actually live on YouTube. Going to start trying to do this uh, every week. I'm going to go live on YouTube. Been actually planning. I got a couple of things that I'm working on. And uh, cause November is <laughs> national uh, podcast posting month though. So Nan pod Pomo, I think is the way they call it. I'm not hundred percent sure if that's exactly how it's pronounced, but something similar to that. And anyhow, it's a where you post a podcast daily. And so I'm actually getting prepped for that because with day job and all that, not going to be able to get that fully done, fully done, or at least not easily. And I'd like to try to show people that you can do stuff. You, you find a plan, you can get it done. And this is just something, a big challenge. So, you know, what is it? 30 days in November. And so that's, you know, that's 30 episodes of boom, boom every day. So I know I'm not going to do a 30 minute to an hour show. This is just, these are going to be little short five, 10 minute quips, boom, and get in, get out, get done and get on down the road. Because I know y'all are going to end up being busy. And if I'm throwing a whole bunch out there, y'all are going to go, shoot, man, I am never going to get caught up. And you can, it's not going to be hard. And I've already started working on the, uh, on the thoughts and all that. So it's, it's great. So these are some some fun things that are coming up. Another thing that is coming up and I'll remind you also at the end of the show, but I have a try coaching event that is coming up and it's just going to be done through, through zoom. If you're interested in seeing what it's like to be coached and to see that it's not so bad, I'm not going to jump down your throat and beat you up and call you a loser or anything like that. I'm going to just help show you what coaching is about and why it is such a powerful tool to have in your arsenal for those goals that you're wanting to achieve. If you're interested in that, October 14th, 10 a.m. is when it's going to be. And I'm going to coach. It's I'm setting aside two hours, but if, if I end up getting 100 guys in here and they all want to be coached, Dude, I'll be here a day until the night and to whenever it is that I finally get all 100 of you gentlemen coached. And this isn't going to be the only time. If this turns out to be a fairly decent success, then you know what? I will I'll keep going. I'll keep doing it. I'll keep trying that trying different ways. I want to because guys, coaching is such a wonderful thing to do. And I I want to encourage y'all all to start trying to see what it would take to get coached by somebody. 
Is it expensive? It can be. Is it? And that's one reason why I'm doing just a little free one. You're doing, you can do a, ask a question. We can coach through that question and, and find a, you know, a nugget of solution that you can jump into. So with that, you know, it's, it becomes a, you see, oh, it's not so bad. I'm not going to die doing this. And so I can actually have a, a good chance of finding that success, getting that fulfillment that I actually want. So guys, if you're interested, like I said, October 14th, 10 a.m., all you have to do is go to relaxedmail.com forward slash try coaching, all one word, fill it, put your first, last name, email address, and you're on your way. All right. Uh, you'll receive a little notice that gives you the, uh, the, the link so that on on uh, the 14th you will be able to get it you'll also receive a, a couple more little notices throughout the uh till the uh till the day the event and uh so yeah there's that all right so that's all big news that i wanted to cover today um other than just saying thanks guys for for listening because we're we are still growing we're going up and up to the right if this is your first time listening to the show man Hello, welcome. Um, yeah, I sometimes jabber. A lot of times, I don't do this much uh, <laughs> intro in the, at the beginning, but uh, just a lot of things that I want to want to talk about. But uh, if you're new and you're you find that the the information that you're going to grab in this show is useful, it resonates with you, and you understand how it can help you, then please, I ask you to hit the follow share button or follow. Uh, subscribe button on whatever podcast app of choice that you have and you will get this podcast episode downloaded each and every week and uh so anyhow we're here this is episode 196 we're and we're talking about how you actually forgive yourself let's go ahead and let's jump on in here so now many times we have done things in our past and at the time, we may have thought that it was a good thing. There's other times where we think that yeah, this isn't the best uh, best choice that I ever made. This is really dumb. This is stupid. Um, and then there's times that we do stuff, and all of a sudden, we're like, it dawns on us how le- how screwed up that was. Maybe we really hurt somebody who was close to us. Maybe we you know, we really did some damage to our, uh, to our, our reputation. We have, we fell out of alignment of our integrity and stuff. We just took our whole set of values and just crumbled them up, wiped our butt with them, tossed them over our shoulder and just went into, you know, just threw all, all of our self morals out the window and just did something that was horrendously terrible. Once the hangover has kicked in and you're waking up wondering what in the hell you did to yourself, that regret, self-shame, things along those lines start coming in. They start causing these different problems. And we start really kind of self-hating ourselves and wondering what we were thinking when we did whatever it was we were thinking. And that's where this episode starts to help because I want to help you first understand how you get past the fact that you did something that was downright dumb, downright stupid. And you're just, it's like, how do I, am I going to even uh, live this down? And it's, it's not, a, you know, it's not easy. It's it's not easy. Forgiving yourself can be incredibly hard. And the reason why is because it's you. You are your own worst enemy. We've always been our worst enemy. We are our hardest critic. We, uh, we you know, I, I could look over here, you know, uh, oh, yeah, see my little, my little cow lick over here. My hair is growing out and I could throw a fit because I'm on camera right now, Dad Gummin. I should be having a little better, uh, better you know condition of my hair but sadly i have grown up with this little little cowlick my whole life and i either have to have my hair stupidly short 
or really long, but I, I'm a blockhead. And so this section of my hair grows out a lot faster. And so I get this, uh, <laughs> this weird, I, I get uh, weird thing going on with my hair where I, I look almost Kramerish and I can actually get it's it's terrible. So <laughs> yeah. So we got, you know, we can do things and I don't even know where I was going with that whole hair thing. But anyhow, we we start having our uh throwing doubt and shame and and self-loathing on ourselves. And that is where we get ourselves in trouble because with that self shame, with that self doubt, with the self, you know, incrimination self, just, you know, beating ourselves up day in, day out about all the dumb stuff we've done. And we've done dumb stuff. We're humans. We're going to do dumb stuff, especially when, because us humans have emotions and emotions are just the most wonderful and messiest parts of being a human. And so you got to, you got to start understanding how to give yourself grace and we're going to get into that. So, but anyhow, to start with, how do you get past your screw up? How do you get past the fact that you did something that you are ashamed about? Well, the first off is you got to pay attention to what your thoughts are. Your thoughts are constantly going to be creeping in, going Dude, you're an idiot. You're a moron. You did. I can't believe you did that. You're going to get, you know, people are not going to like you anymore because you did X, Y, and or Z. And your mind is set to beat you down. And the reason why it does that is because if it can keep you beat down, you will stay small. And if you stay small, you won't be seen as much. And if you're not seen as much, you're going to be a lot more alive. <laughs> you're going to live longer in its mind, except for the fact that you have to leave the, the cave to go get food. You have to do dangerous stuff to, to be able to actually live. And that's one of the big things that we have to understand is that we have to do dangerous things to be able to keep our ourselves going, keep ourselves alive, keep ourselves on the face of this earth. And if we don't, and we stay hidden, we become, you know, agoraphobic. I think that's the proper phobia, um, afraid of going out and stuff. If we become agoraphobic, then we're going to, we're going to starve and die if it gets bad enough. And a lot of people who claim they have, you know, social anxiety, is just they're just experiencing that anxiety and not allowing it to to flow through so they and so that causes them to feel bad about themselves and so we beat ourselves up if we don't have an intentional mind if we don't let don't pay attention to what our thoughts are we will always be beating ourselves up it would subconsciously or not even subconsciously but we have a conscious thought. We have an intentional thought and a conscious thought. And that uh, conscious thought will just hound you to death. Another problem that you want, or another reason why you want to pay attention to what your thoughts are is because our brain being the criminal that it is, and it will, it, it, they, it likes to do things that are, that are, uh, that are quite uh, devious in ways but it loves to return to the scene of the crime. So you'll ruminate and you'll go over the same scenario over and over and over again. And you're still not coming up with any solutions. And that, you know, that whole definition of insanity of trying the same, doing the same thing over and over, you're going over every little detail and you're not even making any changes. Oh, I could have done this and it would have been all right. I've done this. Well, guess what, dude? should have and could have and would is all you know are all nice and fun but the fact that you you screwed up a good bit it means that you screwed up a good bit and you're just going to have to build a bridge and figure out how to get over it because yeah we you have to forgive yourself for the that fact that you did something wrong and 
we all enjoy doing something that we really to, to drive this home, we really shouldn't be doing. And that is shooting all over ourselves. We love to shoot. Oh, I should have said, yes, ma'am. Or I should have done this. Or I, I, I should have left at whenever at that first red flag, I should have uh, not had that drink. I should have not picked up those cigarettes. I should have not have eaten brownie. We have a whole bunch of shoulds and we love to shoot on ourselves. And we love to shoot out on other, other people too. And this is something that I work tirelessly making sure that I don't, well, this is what you should do. And this is what you shouldn't do. And we do that to ourselves. And I, I do shoot on myself a whole lot. Oh, I shouldn't have, I'm such an idiot. I shouldn't have done that. Stop shooting on yourself because shooting on yourself doesn't fix the problem. Again, shoulda, woulda, coulda. It's not doing you any good. Your thoughts are going to return to the scene of the crime. And you just have to be aware of what your thoughts are. You have to be aware that your thoughts are just hanging out and about and all around and pay attention to where they track to. Are they going over? Oh, 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 oh right back to the scene of the crime again. And the reason why our mind likes to do this, and one of the things, one of the tactics that it has is it likes to try to muddy the water. It wants to go, well, you know, you could have done this, or you could have done that, or you should have done this, you should have done that. And all that splashing around really dig, muddies the water up, keeps you from seeing what the actual circumstance is. You have to pay attention to what that circumstance in your life is, because how you think of that circumstance determines on whether you're willing to forgive yourself or you're willing to keep beating yourself up. Are you going to keep whomping up on yourself? Are you going to keep just beating a, beating a problem that has no resolution? It's done. It's past. It's in the past. You can't be there that you don't have the DeLorean. You don't have the flux capacitor. You're not getting back. You have to come and accept the fact that, yeah, you screwed it up. And that's the key to getting past it. Getting past it is first, you have to take responsibility. You screwed up somewhere, someplace, somehow. What was it that you did? Lay it down. Nay, don't sit there and go, well, my sister hadn't gone off and, 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 thrown that uh, pillow at me i wouldn't i wouldn't have smacked her in the head with it you know we could say should if they didn't or you know if the boss hadn't have thrown this extra job on me if i didn't have to drive a truck or if i you know i can make as many excuses as i want making excuses is not taking responsibility you have to learn to make take responsibility for your actions, because the only person who has full control over you is you. And because of that, you're going to have, you're going to have people who are wanting to blame you and you're going to agree with them that they want to blame you. But to forgive yourself, you're going to have to actually Accept the fact that you're the only one who consciously made that choice. Those choices that you make, the scenario you found yourself in, those were all part of the, the, whole, the whole arena. But you, how you acted in there was because of your thoughts, your thoughts of what that scenario was, which caused a sense of, of emotion, caused you to take action. It wasn't that you didn't feel bad because somebody looked at you funny. You felt bad because somebody looked at you and you interpreted that look as being funny. And that that interpretation of she looked at me funny or he looked at me funny or whoever it was looked at you funny 
cause the emotion of, you know, of uncertainty to creep up. And because you were uncertain, you changed your script on the fly. And you did something that wasn't rehearsed. And it didn't turn out right. And so you are beating yourself up over that. How can I ever forgive myself for, I knew what I was supposed to say. And I said the exact opposite. I'm such a freaking moron. Are you a moron or did you just have the wrong thought? Because if you had the wrong thought, there's a big fix in that. You can start having a better thought. Someone looks at you funny. Eh, okay, congratulations. You know, maybe I've got a piece of uh, spaghetti hanging in my beard or something. You don't know. <laughs> so, so take responsibility. And with that responsibility, voice the It is <laughs> poor phone is is dying, and so my my silent uh, my silent switch on the uh, on the side doesn't work anymore. Apparently, well, it works, but it it's 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 iffy. So anyhow. You have, when it comes to your mistakes, when you voice them out loud, you're taking that power away from it, away from your mind, where all of a sudden it's, it, it's the shame of what you've done. You voiced it. Yeah. I, I stole the candy bar at the, uh, at the convenience store. I walked out without paying for my drink. I, whatever it is that goes completely, that is eating you up. That's causing that guilt within you. That's causing that shame. That is the voicing it out removes the layer of shame on there. It actually makes it easier. Exposing that to sunlight causes it to start healing. And I get you know, some of y'all are probably going, oh, I can't say anything like that. I would, you know, my, what I did was really, really bad. Well, okay. I, I don't know what it is you did. And it's not really my concern as to what it is that you did. I just know that whatever it is that has been done. Is in the past. And the reason why that big, bad, scary past is big, bad, and scary is because you're allowing it to be big, bad, and scary. It's like you standing, you know, around a corner and you see this big shadow come along and it's, oh, and then you come around the corner and you see that it's just, you know, a two-year-old with his arms up in, his, in, in the air going, oh, and it's, you know, <laughs> you, you worried more than what the actual problem was. But you have to decide, is it, you know, is this something that you're, you have, you can voice out, uh, you know, you, you don't have to tell, say it out loud with somebody around. If you're out in the middle of a field, you could say, you know, I wanted to, uh, wanted to, kick my sister in the face or whatever, you know, you can, you could say that and no one's going to be around to, to hear it, but your brain is there and it's, you're separating that whole problem away so that you can actually start allowing the thoughts to, to flow and how you can actually start fixing whatever issue you end up having. But the biggest part of it is, is you have to take that responsibility. Next thing is grant yourself some, some grace. Now, if you don't know what grace is, grace is unearned forgiveness. It's real hard for somebody who's wanting to beat themselves up. But if you can, if you forgive yourself for the damages you've done, you, and you'll have to, and I'll, I'll preface this with, or 
I'll voice out that this is something you're going to do on a very regular basis. This is something that you have to do repeatedly, especially when you start seeing yourself going back to the scene of the crime. You start reliving whatever that horrible deed was that you did. It's like you have to, when you start seeing that and when you start ha- mentally being able to notice that you're back at that scene of the crime of shame, you can stop that thought. You actually have that ability. You can stop whatever thought you're having, stop it and go, it doesn't matter. I've forgiven myself for what I've done. Now, if you did actually commit a crime, there's a good chance you're still going to have to pay for the crime. You're still going to have owe a debt to society. So if you went out and shot somebody in Reno because you just wanted to see what it was like to have him die in front of you, you're you're going to wind up over in Folsom Prison anyhow. But if you can, but if you're willing to give yourself that grace keep and keep forgiving yourself because most of us our our shame that we have isn't nowhere isn't anywhere near as as horrible as we'd like to think it is some of it is you know a lot of it can be religion based i oh i I looked at a dirty magazine or i was watching porn and i'm i'm oh i'm horrible about that now we can we can do some serious harm to ourselves if we don't forgive ourselves. There's men who actually have severe cases of ED and they cannot have relations with their wife because they looked at porn. And there's, I know there's other guys. There's a lot more of y'all out there going, "What? What the hey? That's so." But that's the power of our mind. And when we misapply that power with religion because religion is good religion has a lot of good to it but when we use it incorrectly it can be very harmful of course at the same time nutrition when used correctly is very good for you when used incorrectly you end up looking worse than someone who has very you know very bad nutrition good case in point look at a vegan their skin is horrendous. Why? Because they don't have the needed amino acids and fats in their skin that they actually need. They're trying to get it all off of off of vegetables. And our body is meant to have meat. It's it doesn't, it's not all 100 percent meat. I'm not saying do the carnival or diet because that's just going to a side a different extreme. We us humans need to do everything in moderation. Have you know. Have a whole bunch of uh, vegetables one night. Have some steak the next night. Big old baked potato one night. Hot dogs the next. You know, you can mix it up. You can have a good life. You can have a good, healthy system, but you have to do it in moderation. If you're beating yourself up time and time and time again because of something, uh, one thing you did 10 years ago, it's going to show up. It's going to, uh, and you're not letting it out. It builds up, it festers, and it's going to affect you down the road in ways that you didn't think think it would ever show up. There's people who keep secrets in them in their in their lives that they don't forgive themselves for. And because of it, they wind up getting things like that's where some, a lot of people think the fibromyalgia is coming from that's a lot of things all in that area where the book is the body keeps the score i need still need to read it just because there's parts of it that sound like it probably makes sense and then there's others that is just like i'm not I, I'm, I'm not 100 sure if it's uh if it's a great uh great book or if it's as wonderful as people uh claim and but I don't know. I like I said, I haven't read the book, so I don't know if it's uh, as uh, as as amazing as as some people claim, or if it's even better than what they claim. But 
The key point though, is anytime you find yourself, when you start paying attention, being very intentional on your thoughts, when you realize that your thoughts have wandered off back over to whatever shame fest you're, you're, you're giving yourself, give yourself the first, give yourself the grace that you went back there. It's like, all right, come on, come on. Let's get back. Let's get away from that area. That place stinks. It's horrible. It's not doing us any good hanging around there, but also give yourself enough grace to go. You know what? You're okay. You're fine. Yeah. We screwed up. We, we, we humaned the hell out of that. And we screwed up eight ways to Sunday. So, but we now learned from it and you can learn from whatever that problem, that instance was. And if you learn from it and you don't ever do that again, then beating yourself up over, it's not going to do any good. You don't need to run around and going, ah, I'm a piece of crap. I'm a piece of crap. I'm a piece of crap. No, dude, you're a human. All right. You're a human that did human stuff that wasn't, wasn't great. Wasn't wonderful. Maybe you've got thoughts of, of all sorts of, of shameful things. Maybe you were in full on rebellion mode when you were, when you were a teenager. And now you are, you're reverend over church. <laughs> <laughs> how do you how do you equate that well i mean you could beat yourself up over it you could i mean you could even be one of those that goes off and and punishes them themselves with uh with whips and stuff like uh, on uh the da vinci goat or you could go ahead and just grant yourself grace and that's the key part of it is when you're forgiving yourself and you're working on getting past that shame you have to be able to grant yourself grace because yeah, it sucks. It's not the funnest thing in the world, but the, that grace that you apply to yourself allows you to uh, start applying grace to other people. As the, as the Bible verse goes, the second greatest commandment is love our neighbor as you, as you love yourself. You can't love your neighbor until you start loving yourself. You can't forgive your neighbor until you can forgive yourself. That's where whole, so much of the uh, anyone not guilty can cast the first stone. You can sit there and we can cast judgment. And we do. We cast judgments all the time. And even minute ones and, and inconsequential judgments of, you know, I want a Coke tonight or I want a Dr. Pepper. You made a judgment call. I'm going to have ice cream. I'm not going to have ice cream. That's a judgment call. You made a wrong judgment call somewhere in your life and the effects are what you're wrestling with now. It's a bad judgment call. All right. You can beat yourself up if you want, or you can learn from it. You can take the lessons you need from this particular problem and rectify it and grow from it and become a better person. Because if you don't, you're going to have that struggle. You're going to suffer needlessly because of that. You're suffering and, need and needlessly suffering because you didn't forgive yourself. And you're beating yourself up and you're just being rather vicious to, towards yourself. And if you don't, you're going to have those problems. You're going to not see yourself worthy of joy. And so when you start feeling joyous about something, you find a girl that you like and you're not worthy of joy. You're going to do something to drive that girlfriend away because you're not worthy of having a, a wonderful woman. Yeah, you are. You're very much worthy. If you're working on yourself and bettering yourself, you're very much worthy. If you're not working on yourself, you're still actually worthy of having a beautiful, wonderful, caring woman. You just, she's going to be along for the ride that you're going on, which is something that actually women like. They want to go on adventures. They want to see you improving yourself. If you're the one who's constantly sitting on the couch going, yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm guilty of that. I've, I'm putting on, putting on pounds, getting back in the truck. And that's something I didn't want to do, but it's happening. 
but I'm also making corrections because I, I screwed up. I screwed on, I screwed up on, in what I was eating and mindlessly eating. And that's a, that's an issue. So if I'm going to eat a lot, I'm going to eat some, some that's at least got, uh, got some vitamins, minerals in it and not just, uh, not just wheat. So you got, you can do it. You can forgive yourself and you can move on. You can get further down the road. You just have to understand your, your mind wants you to be safe and you can play when you catch it doing that, just pat it on its little imaginary head and go, Oh, God bless your sweet little heart. I know you're trying your hardest to make sure I stay safe, but I'm okay. And you can actually talk to your thoughts this way. Believe it or not, it helps you to process these weird, bizarre thoughts. If you talk to them, I understand, man, I understand. You go hang out in the back of my mind right there. I, I don't need you at the moment. Thank you, though, for the warning. And, you know, you can change your thoughts. If you need help, maybe you've got something that you've got, you've gotten to the point where you're forgiving yourself, but you don't know where to go from there. Then reach out, see what we can do, see how I can see what I can do. And in coaching you to get your next, get to your next level, to get you from the, from your base point right now to get you up to the point to where you are taking the steps to become the better person. That's what the coaching is about. Coaching is getting you from where you are now up to the next level, up to that next level and up to that next level. If you're interested in doing that, go over to relaxmail.com forward slash coaching. If you want to, curious about what coaching is all about like i said i've we've got the uh try coaching event that's coming up on the 14th of october and that is relaxmail.com forward slash try coaching guys with that i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna start letting you go if you uh have any questions you can shoot an email to me over at brian with a y at relaxmail.com or you can uh, just leave a comment at the uh, over at the show notes. And this will be uh, episode be relaxmail.com forward slash one nine six. You can leave uh, leave a comment there. Love to have comments and love to talk to people that way. So guys, with that, if there's uh, if you found anything in this message that was moving, it helped ring uh, helped answer some problems that you were were facing and had some conundrums you were you're mulling over. Share this out. Share this with your friends, your family, your band of brothers. Share it with those guys. Let them know there is this thing called the relaxed male out here. And it's a group of men who are helping other men become better men. We're men who are able to see that the anger that they have is not because somebody did something to them, but it's simply because of a thought that they had about what that person did. That is where we make our uh, make our our changes that's the fact that we are working on all four pillars our real mind body soul and community those four pillars getting worked on especially the community one helps us become more balanced more masculine men the men that our society desperately needs right now so guys with that i want to say thank you very much for listening y'all take care have a great one till next week bye